morning, sock knitters. It is step three where I'm posting every other day and we're doing this sock super slow step by step. So first thing I want to say is a hearty welcome and thank you to my two new patrons, Sue Shapiro and Carol Tetley. Thanks for joining me over at patreon.com forward slash pearl together and making a monthly pledge to support this channel and keep these videos coming to you each and every week. So thanks so much for joining me over there. If you want to learn how to become a patron, head on over and see what I'm offering for your small monthly pledge. All right, let's get started with knitting the heel flap. I'm going to show you how I prefer to knit the heel flap and how to measure and how to know how long to make your heel flap so that it accommodates the arch that you have for your specific foot. All right, we're ready to start the heel flap and the gusset. I have nine total chart repeats on my sock. So if I were to divide these evenly in half, I would actually be splitting this chart repeat right here in the middle, and I don't really want to do that. So at this point, I need to decide, do I want to have the larger portion, the 40 stitches, be my heel flap, or the 30 side with 32 stitches to be my heel flap? Now the way heel flap is constructed, you just knit a big rectangle here and that usually the number of rows in that rectangle correspond to the number of stitches that you have across. So if I were going to do a heel flap that was 32 rows because I have 32 stitches here, for me, because I have a high instep, that's not going to be a long enough rectangle to fit me very well. So I'm going to choose to do my heel flap on the side that has 40 stitches because I need that taller heel flap or that taller rectangle which is going to ultimately produce a longer more sloping gusset and a bigger circumference around my high instep so we'll get into that a little bit more specifically later um, but if you have a sock that you've cast on 64 stitches for example you just divide it right in half um, or wherever works best for the pattern that you've chosen the beginning of my round is here on the right. I'm just going to knit the first half or my first 40 stitches in my case. I'm just going to go straight across. I'm not worrying at all about the pattern for right now. I'm just because I'm beginning the heel flap. I'm just going to knit straight across. Now I'm going to knit the heel flap solely on this half of the sock. So I'm just knitting on this first needle and the stitches that are going to rest until we join back up are back here. These are just going to hang out back here and we're doing nothing with them for the moment. So just knit your way straight across this first needle. I'll also point out that I'm doing this after a complete chart repeat. Like I didn't stop in the middle of the chart rows. So that way I know where I am when I pick back up and resume the pattern. You'll see what I mean about that uh, in a couple of lessons. So just knit your way straight across. All right, when you get to the last stitch on the needle, the last one I want you to knit through the back loop. Okay, knit that last one through the back loop. If you didn't on this first one, it's not that big of a deal, but it's helpful to do that and you'll see why in a moment. Okay, so now turn your work so that the purl side is facing you. Now this is one of very, very few times where you're ever gonna knit with the inside facing you and this in, this half between you and your the needle you're working on. But we're gonna knit back and forth just on this one needle, so we have to ignore these stitches in the front for now. All right, slip the first stitch purl-wise, so slip as if to purl, put your needle in from the back like you're purling, just slip that right off, and then purl back across purling the last stitch like normal, and then turn your work. All right, I've completed my purl all the way back across, then I'm gonna just turn my work back to the front, to the right side facing me. Now is when I'm gonna start doing that slip stitch knitted reinforcement. Get myself straightened out here. All right, now the first thing I'm gonna do is slip the first stitch as if to purl. Slip as if to purl, unless directed otherwise. We always slip as if to purl. So slip one, and then I kind of just tighten that up a little bit. Slip one, knit one, slip one, knit one, slip one, knit one, all the way across. Now the reason this is reinforcing to the back of your heel is because whenever you slip one and push that over on the right needle, now you're carrying this you're working yarn across the back and that adds an extra layer of cushioning behind there, that little baby float, if you will. And so that adds 
cushioning, which is also why I like to continue the slip stitch reinforcement after we turn the heel. And I'll show you how I prefer to do that. So you're just gonna carry on, slip one, knit one, and since that's a two stitch repeat, we're gonna end up with a knit one at the end. And so the last stitch, again, you're going to want to knit through the back loop. The reason that we knit it through the back loop is because it turns it 180 degrees so that the stitch opens up to the left so it will be easier to see it to pick it up later. So knit this last stitch through the back loop. All right, then you're gonna turn your work, slip the first stitch purlwise, and purl your way back across. So the whole heel flap is simply those two rows alternated. Slip one purlwise and purl across. Okay, so again, on the right side, you just slip as if to purl, knit one, slip one, knit one, and you just slip one, knit one, alternating that all the way across until you get to the last stitch, which you knit through the back loop. Then the second row is just slip one purl wise and purl every stitch back across. And you keep alternating these two rows until the heel flap is the number of rows that you would like for it to be. So I'm knitting through the heel flap here and I just wanted to pause. I'm about halfway, a little over halfway through knitting that. So these vertical lines are caused by doing that slip stitch reinforcements. You're carrying up the slip stitch to one row and then purling back. So you're not carrying it up more than more than one row. But then also you can see all of those little floats that's, you know, when you carry the stitch across. So that's the reinforcement cushiness of that. So it's really very nice. The other thing I was gonna show you more clearly was the result of slipping the first stitch and knitting through the back loop it results in an edge that is clean and it looks like a crochet chain edge, see that? And so that's gonna be really easy when we go to pick this up. You can clearly see both legs of that, of that orange stitch, for example, right there. You can see that it's easy to pick up and get underneath. So that's the result of slipping that first one and then knitting through the back loop creates the same effect on the other side and then slipping the purl, first stitch when you purl. So I'm gonna carry on and how, the other thing I want to explain is how I know how long to knit my heel flap. So you want to measure on your foot the outside of your ankle bone. So the knobby part that is the outside of your ankle bone is going to be here when you try this on. And then you want to knit this heel flap to that same distance from that circular ankle bone, the center of that, to the floor is how long you want this flap to be. So whatever that is for you or for your intended recipient is how long you wanna make this. So you're gonna then make a note of that so you know how many rows you did for the second sock. Now each one of these chain stitches is equal to two knitted rows because remember we slip the first stitch, knit across, slip this one and knit back across. So you'll have half the number of chain stitches as you do actual knitted rows. So you'll wanna do at least the same number of rows up as you have stitches across. So for me, that's 40. So I will knit until I have at least 20 of these chain stitches. But mine, I usually prefer to be longer because I have a higher arch or you know the distance between my ankle bone to the floor is usually a little longer than that. So we'll see how this one in particular turns out. Okay, knit through your heel flap. Be sure to post in the Facebook or Ravelry group if you have any questions. I'm happy to help you over there, as well as in the comments down below. Be sure to catch my next video on Friday, which I'll show you how we're going to turn the heel. I always feel like that's magic. And how you can customize the width of that heel, whether you have a wide heel or a narrow heel, I'll explain how you can make it fit just right for you. All right, thanks for watching.